I am so, so sorry for the delay on this video. I know it's been three weeks since the last one. I was supposed to upload it that week, but then I ended up having a bunch of meet. I was supposed to upload it the next week, but I ended up having a bunch of meetings. And then the week after that, I got super, super sick. And then I was supposed to upload it yesterday and that died too. So now we're doing it today. It's going up um, and I'll have a few updates at the end of this video. So yeah. <laughs> So in the first video, I talked about like my recent journey as being a full-time influencer and what that's been like and what my experience has been, why I did it. And I opened the like question up to you guys of what did you want to know about me being a full-time influencer? What were some of the struggles? What were any of the specific questions that you might have had on the subject? So I'm literally just gonna go through comments now and just see what you guys ask. I think there's only a few questions. Self-management, do you have an agency or an agent and your thoughts on it? I wish I had an agent that would make my life so much easier, but I don't um, mostly because I don't actually think I'm big enough to have one yet. I don't think I would need one until maybe at least 50,000 on Instagram, more likely 100,000 on Instagram. And even at that point, I know people who have those numbers and don't have agents or managers or anything like that. It's totally not necessary if you can understand contracts and if you're getting enough deals on your own. If you feel like you're not getting enough opportunities, then yeah, seek out a manager or an agent. And as far, as far as finding one, it's kind of like a dirty little secret in the influencer world, I've noticed. Like no one wants to talk about how they actually found their managers. A lot of times they reach out to you once like you get big enough, but um, no one ever really wants to talk about it. I have a few that I've kept my eye on, like managers that I might reach out to when I get bigger, but like, it's the weirdest thing. No one actually wants to talk about it. For, I guess for obvious reasons, you don't want someone to steal your manager or like, steal your attention or time or whatever, but it's just a strange thing that a lot of influencers are willing to help out, help you out in a lot of ways, but not that way. Time management, scheduling all of your different types of content and how you manage day-to-day -day affairs. So, that would just be a lot of me telling me what to do. So when I first started out, I was trying to post every single day, which was fine. Um, I also wanted to post two videos a week and at least at least like three TikTok videos a week. That schedule was a little bit too rough for me. Now I, I basically just brought it down to one video a week and then for Instagram, if I need to pull away a video, I mean a post, then I can, but I try to still post every day. Sometimes since I do, sometimes I don't. It honestly depends on if I'm sick or whatever. But um, a lot of the time management is really just me figuring out what I need to do that week, like planning out my week then seeing what I need to do on each individual day. Like, okay, this day you're gonna be an event, so you should try to create two things so you have something to upload to Instagram the other day, take a picture at the event, make sure to post it some other day, like make sure to make a video some at some point during that day because you already have makeup on. That was a big thing, trying to find times to make videos when I already have makeup on because I don't like just filming random talk with me videos without makeup. And I also, I'm a weirdo and I don't like wasting makeup. So like, I don't like putting makeup on and then just making a video. Like I wanna then go out and do something or I will have already been decided I'm going out to do something and then it's like, okay, we'll do your makeup. Then you can record a video before you go. Like, I don't know why I feel like, oh my God, I wasted all that makeup once I take it off after I've just filmed a video or filmed a TikTok or whatever, which is a honestly a bad mentality to have because it's not a waste, I'm making a video, but I can't get myself out of that thought process. Where do you find these brand deals or events that brands put on? Every single one of them has reached out to me. I think I reached out to a brand, to a few brands when I was very small and it didn't go anywhere. One of the brands even told me that they didn't do PR and it is one of the biggest brands that sends out PR nowadays. I'm just gonna spill the tea, it's ColourPop. I reached out to ColourPop when I was younger and they said, oh, we don't do PR and like, I realize I'm like, you dumb, yes you do, I know you do, don't treat me like an idiot. <laughs> they said like, we don't do PR because our items are so low cost and I'm just like. Every brand I've worked with um, has reached out to me. Now, I, I've never sought out an opportunity like that. Actually, I have a few times, let me reiterate that, but let, most of them have reached out to me or I use certain apps. One of them is called Brand Snob, the other one is called Tribe. Um, they are influencer marketing kind of apps where 
you can input your info and then like find brands and they'll like you can converse with them through the app and the app takes a little bit of your fee for example if i charge 350 dollars for a post they'll take i think 35 dollars of that so i'll only get 315 but i only got that brand deal because i went on that app so that's like kind of the idea of it but no, most of them just reach out to me and the way that that happens is basically I actually use the product and I post it and I tag them and I keep tagging them because I keep using the product and then they say, hey, this girl would be good for this thing we have in mind, so let's use her for it. Then usually what happens is they'll send me PR, they'll see if I actually post and I get added to the PR list officially and then if they have any like promotion or thing that they wanna do, then they reach out to me and like pay me for a specific paid post or a photo shoot or whatever. Oh, and as far as events, it also, um, it's the same thing. I'm on the PR list for a lot of these brands. Some of them are also connections. I have a lot of friends who run these events and sometimes they just need people to go and so they'll ask me to come and I'll come. Um, so it's a lot of just reading your email and seeing like all of these little opportunities and seeing which ones you can actually do, which ones are, you don't want to do, and which ones might be sketchy and ignoring them. A lot of the ones that are from Amazon uh, Marketplace people are sketchy and I don't do those. And it majorly has to do with location. I live in Los Angeles. Every single like brand has a headquarters here and has events here. So it's very easy for me to get invited to events even though I'm smaller because I live in LA. And if I'm being honest, I know it's a lot easier for me to get PR because I am a person of color and I have kind of a marketable face. I've been told that a lot. I look very marketable. <laughs> so I know that a lot of brands, if they're like, oh, we need to add more diverse people, they'll look at me and be like, okay, she's diverse. She uses our product. She does it well. She takes good photos. And they'll ignore my numbers and just be like, okay, invite her to that thing, give her that opportunity because we need more diverse people. It's kind of a blessing and a curse because sometimes I don't get certain opportunities and I know it's because I'm a person of color. One in particular, um, I applied for a certain opportunity. I don't wanna say too many things because they're still deciding on it, so I might still get it, but I have a feeling I won't because one of the spots has already been taken by a black girl and I feel like I won't get it because they already have a black girl and they don't need more than one. Things like that sometimes happen and I'll be like, oh, and it's kind of easy to tell when you're being like singled out as, oh, we already met our diversity quotient, thank you. And how much of an audience did you have before you started influencing full time? I started this in May and I think I had around 17K when I started doing this and now I have 24, so that's a, increase of about 7,000. For me, that's really good. I've known other influencers who've grown way faster, way sooner, and like done way better than me. <laughs> but um, for me, that's actually a really good increase. I've actually looked at that. I did pretty good. I wanted to increase by like 10K, but it didn't happen, so whatever. I will say that's not a good number to go off of for like every person. I'm in a specific situation where um, I'm, make, I'm making enough money off of influencer work to support myself, but I also have my parents parents to fall back on. If I have a month, which might come up in January because of how like the influencer market works, where I'm getting no brand deals, I'm not getting anything, like and no income, I still have my parents to help me. So I'm in a very blessed position to try and do this. If I wasn't in that position, if I just wanted to do this without any help from my parents and just wanted to um, be a full-time influencer, I think I would have to have about somewhere between 50 to 100K and just seeing how much money I'd be bringing in, in if that makes sense. But yeah, this isn't a normal situation. <laughs> um, this isn't like the average, like, oh, I have 24K on Instagram. I can quit my job and just do this full-time. No, this is like a weird situation where I have savings, I have my parents, I have like, I'm in a weird situation where I can afford to do this. I would not be doing this if I wasn't in the situation. But like I said, about like between 50 and 100K, definitely at 100K, I think you can look at your finances and see what you're pulling in and see if you can afford to like quit. But I would definitely not even consider it until like 50K if it wasn't for my situation. Anyway, yeah, I think that's all the questions you guys had. So um, just to give a little bit of an update, I probably won't be posting anymore until 2020 just because I have a lot of things coming up 
that will prevent me from posting and we've only got like, what? I'm recording this on the 21st, so that's like 10 days until the end of the year. Um, I don't think I'm gonna get another video out. I have a lot of videos planned for next year. I, lit I can think of four just off the top of my head that I already know I wanna make and I'm in the process of making it like I have the stuff, but um, I wanna take my time with them and I might even start making them before 2020 just so I can like get ahead on content. I'm also gonna make a few changes to the structure of my channel, might even change my intro. I don't know, I like my intro. I might update my intro. Um, you've already probably seen that my like banner has changed and stuff. I'm just gonna be doing a lot of little changes. I really wanna push hard with my content in 2020 and I really, I'm gonna take this 10 days where I'm not making any videos or like posting any videos to kind of figure out what kind of content I want to make. I mentioned that in my last video that I want to make a more unique brand of content that I am now, and I'm going to take that time to figure out what that means. So, yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe if you want to see where my content goes from here, and if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in 2020. Bye.